here we go. Um, everybody, thank you so much for um, coming tonight for this presentation through Oil Life by myself, Tam Bayou. So I am Tam and Tam I am, and I am a quantum lifestyle coach as well as a creative. And I am the lead collaborator, lead creative of the Energy Almanac, which is available through Oil Life. I'm going to present to you what I call astro inklings, an astrological look at the year ahead. So without further ado, I'm going to share my screen. It might take just a second for it to, for it to pop up. And we're, let's get started and let's talk about 2020 because there is a lot going on. And oh boy. <laughs> and let's see here. I'm going to take me just a second. Let's hope. There we go. And let me present from the beginning. Here we go, astro inklings, an astrological look at the year ahead. So, as I said earlier, I am Tam and Tam I am, and that's a photo of me in my big pink office. Um, I am an artist, I'm an illustrator, I'm a writer, and I absolutely am madly passionate about transformation and coaching. I coach through the lens of astrology, your natural blueprint, and um, I use a, a lot of different tools like EFT, emotional freedom technique, otherwise no, known as tapping, um, and lots and lots of um, quantum tools. So that's who I am. And I'm going to guide you today um, into the year of 2020 through the lens of the Energy Almanac. Now, what is the Energy Almanac? Uh, by the way, this photo also is showing an image of the planner and playbook that I also created. It's kind of the sister publication, but we're really concerned about the Energy Almanac over here on the right. And the Energy Almanac is astrological insights and holistic re resources for the year ahead. So here you have on the left, an image of just one of the pages of the Energy Almanac. And on the right, you'll get an, a little idea of um, kind of what the inside layout of the book looks like. This is a book put together by um, a collaboration of authors. We have a, a professional astrologer. We have a professional numerologist, a gemstone enthusiast, an essential oil whiz. Uh, we have a yogi and also a nourishment coach. And these folks come together with myself as a coach and together we have pulled pulled all in one place all the information that you need to know to move into the year ahead. This is the second year of this publication. This book was born May 4th, 2018. So may the 4th be with you. Here's a little astrology joke for you. <laughs> um, it was born on May 4th and uh, this is its second year and it has been uh, the feedback has been nothing short of remarkable. People, readers of the book, users of the book, look at the information weekly for guidance and um, actionable steps to use every single week. So every Sunday or Monday, you get out your energy almanac, you open it up, you read what's going to happen, which planets are going to move where, which sign they're going to be in, and how that might affect your life. And we're also going to tell you which area of your life it's going to affect. So it's a very powerful tool for everybody to use weekly. All right, so uh, inside the book, I, I talked about this, gemstones, keywords for every single month. I love have, knowing what the keywords are because if you can't remember a whole paragraph of information, you certainly can remember a keyword. Gemstones, oils, yoga, and nourishment for 2020. So here we go about 2020. And it says it all right in the name of our year. 2020 is all about holding perfect vision. Isn't it something that we all strive for to have <clears throat> clarity for what it is that we're going for? Now, as I talk about the energies that are present in the year 2020, um, I want you to think both micro and macro. I want you to think very, very close to home, meaning you 
and your own personal energy, your own personal visions and goals. And then I want you to think very, very globally. What is it I desire for the planet? What is it I desire for humanity? What is it I care about regarding the climate and government and education, you name it. I want you to always be thinking micro and macro. 2020 in and of itself is about holding perfect vision. So the year ahead, 2020, I always like to start with the numerology. For those of you who don't know or understand the art and science of, of numerology, every single number has a vibration. Each vibration has specific characteristics to it. So <clears throat> the year ahead, 2020, has the numbers two and zero and two and zero. The number two is the number of peace. And, and how, do you, how did we sort of come to that? Well, if you think of the number one, and then you move into number two, it's one plus one equals two. So it's two people coming together. It's two ideas coming together. It's two of something coming together in a peaceful way. And, number two, and the idea of peace is very, very strong this year. Now you can see on the left of the screen that the zero is about divinity. So imagine that zero sort of tilted over your head like a halo. And now you have this uh, divine light shining upon that number two, the peace. Two plus zero plus two plus zero. Now, now let's take the two and the second two and put them side by side to create the number 22. The number 22 is a master number, mastery. Anytime that two single numbers come together, like in the number 11, 22, 33, you're amplifying that energy, whatever it is. So 22, when you put them together, that becomes about harmony. Two and two become about harmony. And the number four in and of itself is actually about manifestation or foundations and structures. The number four of the year 2020 means that we are building something. We are building something that has to take us forward for the next couple of decades, the next two years. So peace right here, and the two and two, our harmony, are the bricks that we need to be laying to manifest a structure that we can bring into our future. I'm going to take a little pause there. Does that make sense? Give me a nod. I can't hear any of you. Okay, some of you are nodding. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. <laughs> um, the the four this and here's the chat box which i will pop into uh now and then so that i can see if anybody needs anything um it's exciting you need to know that as we step into 2020 there is going to come a time a few years from now when we all look back and say that was the year that everything changed 2020 is truly a foundational year and I hope that you can really grasp that at a big and deep level let's go into that next whoop next slide and I missed it so now let's talk about astrology whoa I gotta my uh, mouse is really quick so we're gonna talk about astrology because a lot of people get tripped up why well, you know why would I want the energy almanac because I really don't understand astrology anyway well <clears throat> one of my goals as a coach is to keep things super simple. That KISS method, keep it super simple so that people can really grasp it and run it. Astrology really is a blueprint. Now it's not absolutes. Uh, astrology is more about potentials and astrology brings, brings order to chaos. I'm sure that many of you have felt the shakeup 
that was 2019. And as a matter of fact, a lot of people, a lot of my clients are telling me right now, they're still shaking up. They're still trying to find their feet and figure out uh, what is next for them. 2019 was a hard year because it was the breakdown of the old. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about that in a minute. But what I really want you to know is the way that astrology works. And you need to know they're not absolutes. These are very strong potentials. Astrologers over the thousands of years have studied the patterns of the movement of the planets and have been able to identify how the movement of those planets affect what's happening on the earth. So how do you know what's going on when? How do you decode and decipher what astrology is about? So here's my really simplified version of astrology that I think you'll be able to carry forward. So I want you to always think of the planet as the personality. All of these orbs floating above us have their own personality with specific characteristics. That's all you need to know. When you think of the many, many planets, there are, I hope I say this right, 12 of them, there are 12 of them. Um, they, each of those 12 planets have 12 different personalities. So let's talk about some of them. Venus. Venus is the planet of love and romance and beauty. Venus rules your money. That's the personality of Venus. How about the planet Mars? Mars is the planet of action. Mars is the planet of aggression and movement. But let's talk about what we have right in front of us for 2020, because this is a planet that's very much at play, the planet of Saturn. In uh, January 12th of this year, we had a major astrological aspect happen, and Saturn was one of the planets that was involved. And you're feeling the effects of Saturn right now. Saturn is the planet that rules karma, lessons. So lessons and karma are almost the same word. <laughs> karma is sort of past life. Uh, lessons would be current life. Hurdles. Structures. Saturn rules all these things. Discipline. Saturn is ruling discipline. So the planets each have a personality. What's the next part of astrology that you need to understand? Is the zodiac. The zodiac sign is the clothing that the planets wear that kind of give that personality a little bit of flavor. So let's, we'll talk about some of the zodiac signs. So, I mean, if you're out there and you're a Virgo like me, raise your hand. Not that you can raise your hand, but you can put a note in the chat box. I'm a Virgo. So Virgo, if you were thinking of it in terms of clothing, you might imagine a three-piece suit. A Virgo is sort of naturally wrapped pretty tightly. We're, um, we're analytical by nature. We prefer order. We like, um, we like a holistic, uh, a holistic lifestyle that's part of the Virgo personality. Uh, details are something that Virgos are really, really good at. That would be the, the outfit or the clothing that Virgo would wear. Now let's think about, um, let's think about Libra, the sign that comes after Virgo. If you're a Libra, here's another, I just saw a Virgo there, Tracy. Um, if you're a Libra, raise your hand. So Libra people, oh, they are amazing. They're loving. They're all about relationship and maintaining relationship. They love balance. Although they struggle to, um, <clears throat> they struggle to make decisions. Sometimes they can kind of go back and forth or just hang back and not make a decision at all. So the Libra might go to pick out their outfit and they'll go, oh, I'm totally going to wear this t-shirt dress today because it's flowing and loose like the Libra personality. But then they're like, 
oh, well, should I wear the pink or should I wear the purple? Uh, I don't know. So they would kind of get caught up in, well, he thinks I look good in pink. Maybe I'll wear pink. Oh, but my daughter really thinks I look good in purple. So I guess I'll, you get the picture. The outfit of the Libra could change during the middle of the day. So let's talk about what's at play right now for 2020. And that is the energy of Capricorn. For all of 2020, we are in Capricorn season. I think of the Capricorn as the tie and clipboard because Capricorn rules business for one thing. Um, Capricorn is about responsibility. They're um, a little bit emotionally aloof because they're very busy tasking. Capricorns really are good at discipline. They're really good at responsibility. Um, Capricorn rules, and I really want you to hear this, Capricorn rules on a more global size institutions. Capricorn is also about leadership. <clears throat> so when you think of 2020, and the season of Capricorn, think about global institutions, big business, like box businesses, um, big box businesses, I guess I should say. Think about um, everything from religion and healthcare to government and climate change. Big, big, big institutions are fall under the sign of Zodi uh, zodiac sign of Capricorn. So clipboard with a task, and these are the things we're going to do, and we're gonna wear a tie and keep it all buttoned up. So now you marry, or not marry, you put the tie in the clipboard on Saturn, and what you have is Saturn in its exaltation. Saturn actually rules the sign of Capricorn. So now we have a boatload of energy about discipline, responsibility, structure, form, and business at a global level. Back in January 12th of this year, as I already mentioned, we had a massive aspect that hasn't happened in some 700 years. We had what is called a stellium in the sign of, um, in the sign of Capricorn. What it means when many planets are in one, uh, one sign is called a stellium. It means all the energy is homed in on that one sign. So what other planets were in the sign of Capricorn on January 12th? The sun. The sun showed up in Capricorn. The sun is how we shine, how we show up. The sun when you put it in the Capricorn tie, which I don't have a, a picture of, the sun rules leaders of countries. It rules leadership at big business, big institutions. So imagine the shakeup when the sun is in Capricorn. Mercury was also in Capricorn. Mercury is the planet that is about thinking and communication and also technology. So we already have the sun highlighting and shining upon Capricorn. We have Saturn, which is all those lessons and hurdles and responsibility that we have to make. And we have Mercury who's thinking about it all the time and talking about it. So in the energy field of the planet is all this information about Capricorn. It was practically vibrating and it still is vibrating with stories and ideas and communication about these topics. And here comes Lady Luck. Jupiter was also in the sign of Capricorn. And I'm gonna talk about this planet again in a few minutes. Jupiter is the planet of luck, which is lovely. It's the planet of hope and optimism. It rules expansion and it, it rules belief systems. Um, it also rules fairness. So to a degree, 
it's ruling the legal systems. Jupiter sometimes can be too much of a good thing. <clears throat> if you're one of those people who can always see the, the light at the end of the tunnel and you always know it's going to go the right way, you're either a Sagittarius who is ruled by Jupiter or you just have Jupiter playing out really big in your natal birth chart. Um, I, am, I have Jupiter in a big way in my chart, so I have to watch out for thinking everything is all uh, peaches and cream or roses. So uh, Jupiter was in Capricorn. So put Jupiter, the planet of expansion and beliefs and fairness into Capricorn and apply it to form and structure and business. Are you starting to get this picture? Is it starting to all click? Okay, Saturn, we talked about this. Lessons, hurdles, karma, I'm gonna hold on. And here are, okay, that's why I put Saturn there. I couldn't remember. Go back to Saturn. So the, the other two planets that were in Capricorn, one of them I've mentioned is Saturn. But when you put Saturn with Pluto, now you have massive transformation coming to planet Earth. Pluto, as small as it is and as far away as it is, is the planet of transformation and power. And I drew him, I sketched him to almost look like a bully. He's not a bully by any means, but he is a powerhouse of a planet. This is about the death of something old and the rebirth of something new. Now put it in the sign of Capricorn. Put the tie in the clipboard on this little dude, and what do you have? Now you have this powerhouse coming in to shake up big business, global institution, leadership, and apply and find new ways to look at discipline and responsibility, form and structure. And how perfect, because we're in a four year. We are in a year where we need to build a, a solid foundation. 2019 was about the crumbling. 2019 was about the letting go of what was not serving us. Anything that is not built on authenticity is falling away. And, and let's look again at some of the, I, of the things that are actually playing out right around us right now. Look at, for okay, let's start with the obvious, and that's the climate and the weather and what's going on with the earth. We've had an almost tsunami. We had a massive earthquake yesterday, 7.7. 7. Um, those are the Earth in response to Pluto. These are the Earth in response to Saturn. These are the planets that are vibrating so strongly in the sign of Capricorn to shake things up, to break down old structures and to rebirth them. Let's look at what's going on in our government. We are in the middle of an impeachment trial. What is that going to do? But it's going to, it's going to kill something that isn't working, and I don't know which way that goes, and it's going to rebirth a new way of being inside of government. Everybody is going to be looking at government with a new lens. And we're talking not just American government. Look at what is happening in the UK with Brexit. And Boris Johnson, who just came in, look what just happened. Here's a good example. Um, some of you may know Pema Chodron, the um, American monk, who is a, a prolific writer and she's a leader in the spiritual community. She just stepped down last week because the, I, pardon if I say this wrong, the, the monastery, I guess, that she's working under, the leadership was corrupt. And the entire board of directors of that monastery knew the leadership was corrupt and allowed it to continue. Well, Ms. Pema Chodron is, is so authentic in her love and in her spirituality and in her leadership that she couldn't stay and she left. It's the breakdown of something old and inauthentic and it's the rebirth of something new. Pluto is an absolute powerhouse. And now apply this idea to your life. What have you lost in the last year? 
For some of you, it's going to be a job. For some of you, it's going to be a partner. For some of you, it's actual family members or friends or associations and groups. For some of you, it's a piece of your identity. For some of you, it's a memory that didn't serve you that you're finally willing to move past through forgiveness and other work. You are either in the process of losing something or you already have. That's what 2019 and the energy of Pluto is meant to do. Pluto is a very, very slow moving planet. It takes 276 years for it to, um, for it to make its rounds through the universe. So when, when Pluto is here, it's here to stay for a very, very long time. And Pluto will be in Capricorn for this year, for 2020. So the coach in me is telling you, understand that whatever it is you're losing is for your own improvement, it's for your own betterment. It is for, it is what's right because something new and better is going to come in and serve you. Okay. Woo. That's big stuff. If you have questions, by the way, drop it in the chat. I'm, I'm more than willing to take your questions. Okay. Next slide. Look at me. I forget which slides I have. Discipline, structure, business, responsibility. The dark side of Capricorn, miserly greedy and ruthless could we not say as we look at those words that inside of some of the big business that we have been dealing with in our lives it's there's been some greed some ruthlessness and even some miserly ways that's the old way what's new is authenticity and compassion and and a group think that is hopeful and optimistic and positive. Okay, next slide. Let's surprise me. This is the stellium, and this is what a stellium looks like in an actual astrology chart. I'm, I only am highlighting what it would look like, a, a literal wedge inside of the chart in the area of any given sign. In this case, it was Capricorn. And as mentioned, this event has not happened in 700 years. And the last time that it happened was during the Great Reformation. That was the time when Martin Luther left the church and it became warlike. It was a big shift and a separation of government and religion. And it was very, very disruptive. It's a turnover of authority that's going to happen. It's a... Um, it's the breakdown of power structures. And that is still present right now in early 2020. So when I do um, these workshops, I like to give everybody an idea of what the four quarters are going to be like. And so these are, these are the key words that I would like you to know. The first quarter of 2020 is about rebuilding. So some things inside of our world are already being rebuilt. Um, I actually saw on social media today, it was actually another astrologer, as a matter of fact, who was talking about the rapid growth of conscious businesses. And it's true. When you look around, there are probably more um, pet rescues than ever before. There are more holistic alternative medicines than ever before. There are, uh, let's use government, there are new uh, people applying for government jobs who are respectful and want to come in in a way that is authentic and real and they want to serve. So we are in the beginning stages of rebuilding and that's going to continue through March. In the second quarter, we're going to enter a phase of restructuring. So what's gonna happen is the planet, uh, it is the planet Jupiter, which was the planet of hope and expansion, is going to retrograde. Now when a planet retrograde, it simply means that it's, so, it's slowing down in the sky. It appears to people as though it's going backward. It truly isn't. It's just slowed down enough that it looks like it's not moving. So when, the idea of um, 
Jupiter going backward in the sign of Capricorn, we have a great chance to rethink our hope, <clears throat> rethink our beliefs, rethink the buildings, the structures that we just formed. Quarter one, we're starting to build up structures. Quarter two, we're looking at them and we're saying, wait a minute, did we do that well? Did we do it well enough? Do we need to rethink it and put something in that's going to amplify it somehow? In quarter two, we really want to take a good look at what we are putting, our, putting on the ground, what we are building. So at a, at a very personal level, <clears throat> did you begin a health practice in the first quarter? Is that health practice serving you? Your exercise, your diet, your new self-talk. Um, if you were working on relationship and building a solid foundation under your relationship, is it fully in, grounded in mutual values? Are you having enough conversation? Are you making time for each other? Is the foundation that you started to build early in the year really going to serve you for your entire future? So quarter two, with Jupiter retrograde in Capricorn, take a good look at the things that we were starting to build. Globally, we'll see what gets built. We'll see what happens with impeachment. We'll see what happens with the fires in Australia. We'll see what happens with trade and healthcare and education. And we'll take a good look at it and we'll scratch our heads and we'll come together and we'll say, how are we doing? Do we need to do better? Quarter three is about responsibility. Notice these re words that we're using. Responsibility at a micro and a macro level. This is about having the opportunity, really latching on and owning the fact that nobody but you is responsible for your life, your happiness your success level, your health, your relationships. You are the person who you can look to for the problem and for the solution. In my opinion, because 2020 is the season of Capricorn, you should really carry the responsibility through all 12 months. I'm gonna talk about that more in an upcoming section. Quarter four is about vision. Even though the entire year really is about 2020 super clear vision, I put it in the fourth quarter again as a reminder because at the end of the year, fourth quarter, we are going to start to feel a little bit lighter. The beginning of the year, Q1 and Q2 are heavy and it feels like a ton of responsibility. Our shoulders are drooping. There's such a burden on us. But by quarter four, you're going to start really feeling the effects of Jupiter and you're going to feel hopeful again. And you're going to have reason <clears throat> to expand that sense of hope. You're going to have reason to um, have new beliefs. Your beliefs for all of this year are really going to be shaken. It's going to be a year of a lot of head scratching. When some, of the, the, when some of these things shake out in Q1 and Q2, a lot of people will be left scratching their head. And, and that is the feeling, that's the scientific term of cognitive dissonance. It's like your brain just can't wrap itself around this idea. How is it, it turned out that way? What? And it's very, very um, uncomfortable. There's going to be a lot of discomfort this year. Um, Accept that this is your forewarning that some things are going to happen that may not feel comfortable for you, but it's your responsibility to hold the vision for the structures that you're building. Questions, pop them in there. You're awful silent. <laughs> All right, let's see what's coming up next. So I popped this in here because. Every single month of 2020, there, there's going to be different energies that are at play. I'm giving you the very high level view. I want you to know that inside of the Energy Almanac, we're giving you the exact energies at play. We're going to tell you week by week 
which planets and are moving in which zodiac sign and how well they're going to play together. We're going to give you paragraphs of information that tell you address your health this week, but never mind working on relationships, just shelf that for now. We give you actionable information that you want to reference literally weekly. And then we give you the resources that you need in order to, um, to really abate the energies and sometimes amplify the energies because some of the energies are actually very lovely and you'll want to amplify those. So we have for you inside of the book, um, essential oils, yay! Um, yoga poses, gemstones, and a whole bunch of inform information about nourishment. I don't even know why I left my part out. <laughs> I gave you some great journal prompts inside of the Energy Almanac that you'll want to use as well. So you're like, wow, this is a lot. It is a lot. It's some volatile energy early in this, the year. And I don't think that's such a bad thing. Um, change is good in my world. I think change is good. But in December of um, 2020, something big is really going to happen. And it involves the planets Jupiter and Saturn. So as a reminder, Jupiter is the planet of optimism and hope. You can see I drew her with her hands up like woo and expansion. It's about belief systems and fairness. Saturn again is about karma, lessons learned. It's discipline, re responsibility, and to some degree form and structure. These two planets are, let's see if I can find it are going to form what is called a grand conjunction in the sign of Aquarius. I believe it's going to happen on December 22nd, 2020, on that winter equinox, winter solstice, winter, winter solstice. Um, here comes the age of Aquarius. What does this mean when a grand conjunction forms? Aquarius is the sign of freedom, friendliness, humanitarianism. It rules innovation and it rules uniqueness. It's Aquarius is the sign of the future. It's forward thinking in the friendliest way possible. If I have an Aquarius out there, raise your hand because I'm talking about you. Aquarius isn't afraid to be different. They're not afraid to lean into their uniqueness and innovate. Jupiter is going to expand our beliefs about the future. We can feel optimistic about our future. We can have innovative, expansive new ideas coming in globally and at a very personal level. You may have amazing and sudden new insights about how you wanna move forward in life. On the other, other hand, I completely and totally expect breakthroughs in everything from healthcare and business to education and climate change. It's exciting. We have every reason to be hopeful at the end of the year. That's Jupiter inside of Aquarius. But what happens when Saturn goes inside of Aquarius? Saturn is about being responsible and having discipline as we move forward and innovate. We're going to break free from our lessons, from our karma and we are going to bring business and 
bring our awesome. Robin wrote, awesome. I feel that way every day. And every time I talk about this, ah, it's so good. <laughs> um, Saturn is going to take us into the future in this incredible way through the age of Aquarius. It is the beginning of the age of Aquarius. This grand conjunction is going to happen as a Christmas present to us is how I think of it because it's so very, very close to Christmas. There they are, Lady Luck and Mr. Discipline. Why did I put that in there twice? Saturn and Aquarius. Oh, no, Saturn. Okay, this actually should be a slide about Jupiter and Aquarius. Hold on, ladies, I'm gonna check my notes. I have some, I have some little bit of information that I wanna tell you. Oh yes, Jupiter retrograde in Capricorn. Yes, uh, I don't have the right image here to share with you, sorry about that. Um, I want you to know that coming up in February and in March, all of us are going to start to feel the, the change. Hmm. Hold on, let me see if I can get the right slide. There it is. This is, what, this is what you're going to feel in February and March. Saturn is going to begin to enter Aquarius, the sign of Aquarius. And what that means for you is that you are going to get sudden insights into your future. Watch your meditations watch your dreams and pay attention to um, flashes of insight. It's going to start happening over these next few weeks. It doesn't mean you have to act on it right away. You can if you want, but feel free to sleep on it too as things start to shake out. The information is going to be coming into your consciousness. There's that conjunction. Okay, so just wrapping it up. Um, because I promised Courtney I wouldn't talk for too long, even though I could go for hours. 2020 really is the year of manifestation. Pardon the mess. Have you ever walked into a store and you see our sign, pardon the mess, we're under construction. That's exactly what's going on for us in humanity as a globe, um, as the individual. You are responsible for your joy. Jupiter inside of Capricorn means you have to take, take it very seriously and be disciplined about tracking. How joyful was I today? That's a great question that you can ask yourself every single morning. How much joy can I have today? At the end of the night? Well, how did I do? On a scale of one to 10, if 10 is I was like blissed out and one was I was really angry today, you need to be paying attention and finding out how joyful am I? And if you're in your own way, what can I do to fix it? Second little note about 2020, have a plan. That is the, that is the Capricorn season that we're in. Have a plan, take responsibility, and have discipline for mapping out your plan and following through with it. It's great to have a big idea about your life and it's great to have a great big goal, but without the tasks laid out in front of you, it won't happen. Have the discipline and the responsibility to go for your goal and keep your eye, and I don't mean the eyes in your head, I mean the eye that is your heart and your mind on the goal. The goal for 2020, is to lay bricks of peace and harmony. You are a brick. You are a cog in the wheel. The foundation that you lay every single day when you step foot out of your house and you interact with somebody else is important. Address your life, address others with peace and harmony. Because what you do is a ripple. It, it's amplified out into the world. Thirdly, Nurture common values. The energy of Jupiter asks us to look at our values. What matters to you probably matters to everybody else as well. 
if you care about the children, chances are the other people around you care about the children. If you care about the trees, the chances are good at some level, the others care about the trees too. Find what is a common value. Do you value harmony? Be that harmony. See the harmony in the other people who you think oppose you. We are laying a foundation. The way forward, this is your little bonus piece of information <coughs> that I haven't given in other um, workshops. The way forward is in what we call the North Node in astrology. The North Node is the, um, the top of the astrology chart. And the, the sign, the zodiac sign that shows up at the top of the chart for 2020 is the sign of cancer. The, so the way forward for humanity and for yourself as the individual is through the lens of cancer. The cancer personality, and if any of them are here, is about compassion, emotion, the divine mother, and nurturing of others. Use that lens throughout your year. I'm going to take a second and look at the chat box. It says, did you say this February, March 2020, when we will get insights as to what 2021 will bring? Yes. You will start to get insights in the next few weeks as to your future. I'm not going to say it's relative to 2021. It's about your future. You might get an idea to, to change a job. And it might be a sudden flash of insight and you're like, no way, make a note of it. Just make a note of it because the, the pieces of information are going to show up for you over the next few weeks and it's about your future. Okay, so the way forward is through the lens of cancer and knowing what you need to know. And that's why I want to encourage all of you to, whoops, how do you like that? I didn't know that my mouse would do that. Um, know what you need to know. Know what energies are at play. And we give you that information inside of the Energy Almanac. And some of the things that you can do with the Energy Almanac, and one of the things that I recommend is to build classes using the Almanac. There's an entire, it's at least a half a page. It's probably three quarters of a page of information about which oils are the best oils to use for every single month. So take that and build a class with it. Set up a, set up a recurring class that you can do month after month with the same people. Lead your team based on the energies that are at work. So, so I know that we have one team that's on the call here tonight. What I recommend for leaders is read your energy almanac, understand what is going to play out in the next seven days, and on your team call or in your weekly team meeting, talk about it. Let them know, hey, um, communication could be sketchy, so let's all just have patience with each other and not react. Let's just respond and not react. You can have really important discussions based on the energy that's at play. Lead your team using the energy. Um, <clears throat> gift the energy almanac to rising team members. This is another thing, use it as an incentive. Everybody who hits this goal is going to be gifted this book. It also makes a nice thank you gift. Or simply do your own deep work. The owl on the cover of the Energy Almanac I painted last March 2019. This, this owl, this barred owl swooped me within 15 feet of my face and told me that it, was, it belonged on the cover of the Energy Almanac. And I looked it up to see what does that mean? What does the owl really, really mean? And the barred owl is about all of these things. Wisdom, change, magic, seeing, feeling, hearing, intuition. It's a really big year, 2020, to go in and use all of your inner resources. 2020 is about having a clear vision, rebuilding, restructuring, responsibility and nurturing common values. The Energy Almanac is available uh, here at Oil Life and the link has been posted here by um, Courtney. I am happy to stay on for a few minutes to answer more questions. Um, you can tell me what sign you are, that will be fun. You can ask me about any, anything you wanna know. The person on the left um, with the big smile, that's me wearing the denim. Um, the lady 
in the beautiful pink shirt is Kate. She designed, uh, she designed a beautiful mala, an energy mala that represents the energy of the almanac. The person with the thumbs up is my best friend ever, Bambi Thompson. She um, loves the energy almanac. And the person on the right is one of my favorite cheerleaders, Libby. And um, these women keep an energy almanac right at their desk, bedside, and altar. And I think that's pretty cool. So go forth and diffuse. Take your oils and have a beautiful 2020. Keep your vision in front of you. And I wanna look at some of the, the chat box right now. And I have, let's see, a beautiful class, Tam. Thank you so very much. And Robin is saying, this is so in line with my plans for my business this year. Thank you, it's so helpful. Uh, you're welcome. And I'm glad that it's helpful. And I want you to know that there's so much information for you to run your business. I also privately offer a lot of other options if you want to go deep and work with a coach inside of it. But the, the almanac is your way to really get the information. We have on this call a Scorpio, Mary Claire. Um, Scorpio, so very sensual, very, very deep, um, also very driven. They, they typically have something in mind that they are really, really going for. Uh, a Leo, that's about passion and creativity. Um, I've got a Taurus on the call. Uh, Leo is also about love too, truly, truly about love. Taurus on the call, I'm a, my moon is in Taurus. And so that's all about um, uh, very grounded, grounded. You can rely on a Taurus, that is for sure. And they are about beauty they're ruled by Venus. They're about beauty and material things. They like to have material things. Um, I've got a Capricorn on the call. So you heard all about your personality. That's Aaron. So I was driving home and really enjoyed listening to this. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to see the slides or to respond. So Lisa, I saw that you were on your iPhone. Enjoy the replay. I hope that you'll enjoy the replay. Trisha is a Taurus and I just talked about that. That's awesome. Is it our sun sign or our moon sign? Well, look, you have, a, you have a sun sign. Your sun sign is how you show up in the world. It is, um, it, it's your core of who you are. I'm a Virgo, I'm disciplined, I'm organized, I'm hyper analytical, I love holistic ways of being. But my rising sign is Sagittarius. So the rising sign is how others see you, both physically and emotionally. So I'm a Sagittarius. Any astrologer would say, oh, you're tall and thin. Darn right. Sagittarius represents the physical body that is tall and thin. Um, personality wise, most people would say, oh my gosh, you're into philosophy and you're, you're really about having fun and you love freedom and you love travel. All of that is true. I'm a Sag, I'm a Sag rising. Your moon sign is more about how you deal with your emotions. My moon sign is Taurus. Taurus people tend to be stubborn and fixed in their thinking. When, when I get super happy, super sad, super angry, I hold it. My, I use that Taurus bullheaded stubbornness to hold on to my emotion. So you're, you need to know your sun sign, your rising sign, and your moon sign. They're very important. Go get yourself an astrology reading. Use the person who wrote the energy almanac. Everybody needs to know their personal blueprint. I'm on the cusp of Leo and Virgo. I was born on the day of the change. So interesting, so was I. I'm also a cusp baby, but the truth of it is you're either a Leo or a Virgo. Um, and if you're, if you get your astrology reading and they tell you you're a Leo, go with it run it and own it. If they tell you a Virgo, that's, that's okay. Run with that. What I'm saying is you are what you are. I fought with that a long time. Oh, I'm on the cusp. I'm a little this much. And when I really looked at astrology and I dug in at a very deep level, you are what you are, whatever that sign is. Okay. Um, yes, this is being recorded. And Courtney has just said that the recording will be available within 24 hours. Um, I have a question that says my moon is in Scorpio. 
What does that mean? That means that is how you deal with your emotions. You deal with it the way a Scorpio would. So a Scorpio is very, very deep in their emotions. When they love, they love hard. When they're bitten or, or when they're bitten, they are revengeful. Uh, a Scorpio is very, very deep in the way they feel. Leo sun, Pisces moon, Scorpio rising. So, so much information here. Leo sun, there's that creative, passionate, loving person with a Pisces moon. Another, another highly emotional sign is the Pisces. They're very, very visionary and very dreamy and can get all wrapped up in their emotions very, very quickly. Um, and the Scorpio rising. So people see you as that determined, sensual, sexual, deeply emotional person. So there you go. There's some quick, quick rundowns on Aquarius. What is Aries? My, my oldest son is an Aries and Aries is all about um, fast moving leadership, excitement, enthusiasm, fun, slightly irresponsible. And I say that uh, don't be offended. We all have like negative, there are positive and negatives to every single sign that there is. Um, but they, they can kind of be like make a quick decision and then regret it. So maybe irresponsible isn't the right word, but um, Aries is a really fun sign. They typically have a very young personality. And Trisha says, I already ordered two almanacs. I'm sure I'll get more. Thank you for the fun and informative call. You're so welcome. Thank you for the feedback. Um, where would be a place to get an astrological reading? I am highly recommending the writer for the energy almanac. And if you want to, I'll type it in right here. It's living dash astrology.com. Her name is Janet Hick Ox. Please tell her Tam sent you. <laughs> uh, oops, I just put it in a private chat. I'll try to put it into a public chat here in a minute. Um, I have two air spots. Well, I didn't mean to say that. Really, I didn't. <laughs> Ladies, this has been a lot of fun. I thank you so much for your time and your attention. If there's anything I can do for you, my website is choosebigchange.com. I am Tam and Tam I am. I am who I am because you are who you are. You and I are one. Keep your eye on the prize and have yourself a really beautiful year. I'm going to finish typing this up, put this in your chat box, and I will, I will sign off. Courtney, you can close this up. I'm going to end the meeting.